Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming uh, today. I'm Adam Shopcorn. I'm an art curator. I work with uh, Morgan's Hotel Group as their cultural ambassador. Um, Hank Willis Thomas uh, is joining us for a conversation uh, primarily about advertising, um, ad ads imitating art, art imitating life, and life imitates uh, ads. Unfortunately, Mel Bachner is not able to be with us today. Uh, he had a family matter back in New York, so. Um, you're stuck we'll, with me. We'll miss him, so it'll, it'll be the two of us. Uh, j just to give you some background, um, this uh, art salon conversation um, stems from a, a project that I'm doing, if you guys have had a chance to go outside, titled Plain Text. It's been underwritten by uh, Morgan's Hotel Group. Um, it's uh, 15 artists are a part of the project, and they're flying. Uh, we're flying aerial banners all throughout um, Miami Beach, uh, the city of Miami, the design district, and we're lucky to have um, Hank uh, as a part of uh, that project. Um, so, so, you know, we're going to speak about, uh, actually Hank's banner is in the air um, as we speak uh, with Alexis Smith and uh, John Baldessari. Um, so I guess we could start with the, the text that uh, Hank chose uh, uh, to be in the air today, which is ads imitate art, art imitates life, and life imitates ads. I spent a long time um, thinking about this, and uh, yeah, it's it's very interesting and and fascinating to me. So we're gonna we're gonna play some video. There's um, th there's some audio in the video, and uh, we'll take it from there. Do you uh, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Um, well, it's just great to be here. Um, I'm Hank Willis Thomas, and yeah, the text that. Um, I have as part of the plain text uh, project is this text and it kind of just was really thinking about the old adage art imitates life and I started thinking about the 21st century and I do feel like there's a new dimension of advertising and, and kind of the way that it informs all of our relationships to our own identity to what we value to what we appreciate and, and a lot of things of what we know about the world and so I, yeah so I kind of switched I switched it to say ads imitate art because so much of what, we're, what we see in the fair today will kind of come out into, back to us and through ads. And then, you know, art imitates life because obviously we, we're very familiar with that, but then life imitating ads, I do think there's like kind of this, uh, if not vicious cycle, it's a cycle where we kind of are, see these ads and then actually really try to like navigate our lives kind of towards whatever we kind of are drawn to in advertising. Okay, so, so if we could just uh, move along here. Um, Hank, do you want to tell us a yeah, bit so about Yeah, so this is a lenticular print. Uh, and in my, uh, today I have work in two of the booths with Jack Shaman Gallery and with the, the Goodman Gallery. In Jack Shaman Gallery, I have a lenticular piece that says something else, but it works similarly. Where you walk past it, it goes ads imitate art, then from a different direction, ads, life imitates ads. And, you know, whatever the third one is. <laughs> and, but unfortunately, you can only document it from one angle, so you never get to see the whole piece at one time. And I really like the fact that depending on where you're standing, you're seeing something different in the work. Okay. So um, on the right, we, we see a, um, a piece by Hank, and um, I guess some of the inspiration where, uh, uh, where you know, that comes uh, from the piece. Um, so we see, do, do you want to take us through this? No, you bit? did that. OK, I will do that. Um, so, so uh, the, the, well, the I'll just, let me, let me, because what happened is Adam actually, had, we, we talked about this yesterday. And I really, I think he really did really amazing research about the work that I do and what I'm interested in. And it was really fascinating, because you never know. You know, he's like, I'm a curator. Of course, I do research. I'm like, but how, you're really like looking into it. And what he started to do is he started to look at some of the work that I've done which is a piece on the right, and start to think about kind of the antecedents of that. Um, so on the left is obviously an image of Michael Jordan, which is, you know, a basketball game, which is quote unquote real life. And then the life turned into an ad with the, with the Jumpman logo, which then I used into one of my pieces, which talks about genocide in the United States called Shooting Stars. Um, so why'd sure. you do that? Sure. Um I'm very, I'm, uh, I often, uh, in my practice, I often blend um, sports into arts, and I, you know, I'm, I'm very drawn to um, 
this type of imagery. And uh, I originally had a um, this Jumpman logo in the center is a uh, is a uh, is a it's a company a subsidiary of Nike, and it's it's Michael Jordan's silhouette essentially, and it's Michael Jordan gliding through the air dunking a basketball. But when when I was doing my research, I actually found out that. Uh, it wasn't Michael Jordan uh, dunking a basketball. It was Michael Jordan, you know, in front of a green screen, um, practicing ballet, um, of all things. And uh, that, that's where the, the Jumpman logo comes out from. And uh, obviously, Hanks uh, uh, appropriated this uh, image to some degree and uh, used it in his picture. But of course, when, when, when we see that uh, Jumpman logo, we, uh, you know, we obviously think of um, Michael Jordan, the iconic um, figure yeah okay so um i just you know when i was trying to understand um what what hank was flying um through the air today i just sort of um looked at it very uh, liter literally and um so i just thought if we could play this the way things go just for about um 45 seconds or about 60 seconds uh, that would be great uh this being um the art Okay, uh, if we could pause that, we're going to shift over to a, uh, an advertisement that was made um, 16 years after uh, Fishley and Vice's uh, the, the Way Things Go uh, film. This is a, a Honda ad from 2003. Okay, that, that's great, thank you. Sorry, I couldn't resist uh, having, having to Sugar make Hill you guys sit for the Sugar Hill Gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so so I, th I thought we could, um, you know, I showed Hank this um, yesterday um, when we met, and because uh, I was actually looking for, um, for ads that imitate uh, art, and obviously there's this, um, you know, artists looking uh, for inspiration um, in the advertising uh, community, and now obviously the advertising community perhaps looking for inspiration, yeah, or I'm, even taking it a bit further. Yeah, I mean, I, that's a classic example, because I've done a series of work where I appropriated a lot of ads, and always felt a little bit guilty, because there's 
you know, appropriation is kind of weird. <laughs> um, but then when I, I see, and then I, I became very clear when some of the photographers whose work I appropriated reached out to me and talked to me about kind of how they basically feel like they're appropriating from, the, from, uh, from uh, this side. And, and so it's like a really interesting to see this example, which I showed my father, the Fishley Vice. Um, this is my dad's birthday, by the way. Happy 69th birthday, Dad. <laughs> uh, but um, um, yeah, I showed him the Fishley Vice uh, work at the Margulies collection, where I also have work up. And he just was like stu stuck in front of it, and, like giggling, laughing, watching it. And then t the next day, you show me um, this kind of this basic total ripoff of it, and kind of how it's actually only in service of selling a car. Um, I think it's really fascinating to see kind of how that kind of happens. Definitely, yeah, I'll provide you with one more example because uh, this is sort of the way my brain was working as I was putting uh, together this presentation. It's a Christian uh, Marclay uh, film that he made in uh, 1995 and we'll just uh, give you 45 seconds or so of that. Okay, that, that, that's great. Uh, if we could just slide over to the right, we're, we're going to look at uh, an iPhone uh, commercial from 2007. Hello? 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 Uh, hello? 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 Oh, hello, Barney. Hello? 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 Hi. How you doing there? Yo! Hello? 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 Yo, yo. Hello? 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 So yeah, I'm, I'm sure Hank can, can speak about... That same exact thing happens in this one on the left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Hank could speak a, a bit more to his, um, you know, relationship uh, to advertising, being an artist, his relationship to brands. I'm, I'm quite interested, um, you know, uh, I'm quite interested in how brands have this uh, interest in, in artist work and how, you know, I'm sure Hank's f phone rings and, you know, he gets emails. Uh, from brands looking to work with them, so I just thought maybe uh, you could talk about like some of that, like personal experiences in regards to like brands and. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think one of the things that's really difficult with is that a lot of times people think that if you critique something that you don't like it, and I think actually if you spend a lot of time critiquing something, you must actually love it. Um, and I spent a lot of time thinking about and being critical of ads and the ways in which cor corporate culture kind of affects the way we do and and navigate the world and, I, and relate to ourselves, but I'm also really very much fascinated with it and trying to figure out how um, this all pervasive ubiquitous language, which is advertising, which is, I think, I think advertising is the only language that pretty much you can go anywhere in the world and see an ad and decode it and, and, and get some meaning from it. I think it's actually interesting to try to figure out how to use this language outside of the, the you know, being just in service of selling something. Like, how can we use the same language to talk about other things, and I think with Christian Markley's work and you know and the the previous work that we saw, that kind of we see, something is lost. It's cuter when it turns it's turned into that, but I think something's lost about our ability to just kind of be tra to be transcendent. Sure, and I, I, on the heels of that, I think what's interesting is um, a lot of artists appropriating. Um, you know, where uh, ads in cons consumer culture are pr appropriating for a very long time, and then um, I think if you s if you flip this whole thing on its head, um, now now Christian Markley and Fishley and Vice are asking themselves, wait a minute, like that 
really looks a lot like my work, and it kind of looks a little bit too much like my work. So, what, what, Which what is do ironic I, because he had to appropriate from a film to you to make his work. So it's like that's the cycle, you know. Like, so do I write a letter to the company? Yeah. Um, you know, so so I I, I I'm, not, I'm not quite sure the dynamics of of how this eventually played out, but I do know that. Um, Fishley Vice and uh, Chris, well, well, I know Fishley Vice were, were, were not very happy about the Honda um, COG commercial. But anyway, let's keep uh, pushing forward. Um, yeah, this is this, this is a um, a, a film. Uh, I don't know. It's four and a half min uh, minutes long. Uh, it's 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 fascinating. It's um, it's beautiful. It's touching. I, I you know I watched. I watched it for the first time maybe a week and a half ago. I've watched it quite a quite a number of times uh, since, and I, I thought you could just give us some. Um, well, why don't we play? Why don't you and I step off the stage and and, and play it, and then we'll come back and talk. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay. So this is a very personal piece. So it's I, I'd love to to share with you. Thank you, but let's let's share. Sure. That was a good night, man. I'm glad I met you, brother. I ain't had fun like this in a long time. That's what I'm saying, though, right? We had crazy fun tonight, right? Grandma home. Man, listen, this spot here is the draw on Tuesday nights. Yo, I seen you on what? 15 years? Yo, when you outside bullshit in New York, come back home, man. Philly. Y'all some wild boys. I'm saying. I'm saying, though, whenever y'all want to come to New York, we can do this every night. To be honest, it does feel good to be near the family. Y'all feel me? It's cold out here. Y'all ready? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh! <laughs> yo, where you been hiding? I know that ain't Tyrose. No, nah. Tyrose would have told me if he was coming real, out tonight. That ain't the truth? What's the size of the room? Ooh, what's up, baby? <laughs> Nah, nah, I was just kicking it with my ball from back in the day. I ain't seen him in like 200,000 years. I had to call him six times, uh-huh, just to get him to leave his grandmama house. Whatever, whatever. Hey, Teddy. Yo, what's up, bro? Yo, y'all know Teddy. Yo, and this is my man, Sunga. How y'all feeling? Yeah, yeah. Yo, what's up, what's up? Yo, it's nice to meet y'all, but I left my coat in the car, so I gotta run. It's so cold out here, I feel like I'm gonna turn into chocolate pudding pop in a minute. Hey, hey, baby. Total package over there, give me the lie. Yeah, she was fine, but did you see the joke? Yo, hold on, hold on. Yo, is he doing snow angels? Hey, Osunga, yo, what are you doing, man? A second ago, you freezing, Mr. Puddin' Pot. Now, you rolling around in the snow. You don't fuck around to catch pneumonia. We ain't kids no more, man. Yo, that's a nice chain. But who the fuck are you? Wish I had a chain like that. Hey, man, yo, yo, we ain't even got nothing. Man, give it up. Hey, man, who are you, man? We all good people here, you know what I'm saying? Yo, are you really trying to rob us in front of all these people, man? Yo, I can't believe this shit, man. Shut the fuck up and give up your shit. We all about love and shit, man. Man, don't fuck with me. Just Don't move. Yo, give them your keys. Come on, man, chill, man, chill. This chain ain't even real, man. Stay down. It's shiny, man. Come on, bruh. How you gonna do that to him, man? He just got that chain. <laughs> How you gonna do that? Man, just give up your fucking chain. Just fucked up, man. He was having a good ass night. Oh, let's go, let's go. Yo, come on, come on, come on. Let's get the fuck out of here. Oh, fuck. Birdo. Oh, man, I thought you was watching him. Where the fuck they go? Fuck it, let's get out of here, man. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yo, come on, man. Come on. Yo, what'd I do with him? Yo, yo, just leave him. Fuck it, man. Just bang him. Just bang him. Just, just do it. 
And now it's winter. It's winter in America. Yes, and ain't nobody fighting. Cause nobody knows what to say. Save your soul. Lord knows from winter in America. So this piece, uh, Winter in America, is a collaboration with a, a good friend of mine, an artist, Kambui Olajimi. And basically, uh, we use the G.I. Joe action figures I used to play with as a child to tell the last five minutes of my cousin's life, as was told to me by the guys he was with that night. And we use G.I. Joe action figures because I think, uh, well, actually, I was in a store and I saw uh, a, a, a new G.I. Joe figure. And he had like a machine gun and a machete and a laser. And it said on the box, for children ages five and up. And I was like, and I started to reflect on all the good times I had playing with my G.I. Joes, creating scenarios based around violence and kind of how um, the kind of pointlessness of, the, of, of my cousin's, well, hopefully not pointlessness of my cousin's murder, but uh, the challenges I had with that um, because him being killed by a very young man of, uh, and also um, over a petty commodity, like a chain, which was kind of at the, the peak of that bling bling era um, that people are sold that this is the thing that you want to value and it's more valuable than someone's life. And trying to figure out how do you tell a story that everyone's heard a million times before. By, so by using this goofy format of stop motion animation to tell um, you know, a true story, I think that was kind of um, great. I mean, it's weird because I've seen it obviously a thousand times and it's still kind of that part of the end still makes me jump. Okay, um, so we're gonna push forward. Th this was, uh, we'll, we'll touch on this quick, and then I know Hank wants me to, uh, to, to push further along because uh, we're somewhat limited on people time. People got places to go, people to see. Um. <laughs> exactly. Um, so uh, yeah, this was a, a Reebok ca campaign that I, I was not uh, very familiar with that uh, I guess Hank showed me um, f five or six different uh, images, this being Curtis Jackson, AKA uh, 50 Cent. Um, and yeah, H Hank and I, uh, sh should I take us through all the images? Sure. I'll, I'll, if you flip, I'll talk. Okay. So basically I'm really fascinated by these being re Reebok ads where there's no Reebok product in the ad. Actually, you know, we, know, we see it and we think it's for sneakers, but there's no sneakers. He's not an athlete. He's actually wearing a G unit, which is his clothing company's outfit. But it's really also talking about what reality is he is, but he, what he really is, which is, I guess, a criminal, which I thought was a weird thing that, to be advertising around. And then what's the next one? And then we have Allen Iverson, who's, I guess, really, he was a basketball player, you know, a, a hero to many people, but I guess a, the devil is who he is at the end of the day. And then who's next? Um, and Jay-Z, you know, again, like he's, you may think of him as a businessman, but he's really just a drug dealer. He says, I got my MBA from Marcy Projects. So it's kind of like these, and I'm really interested in a way, like, these were, of, of the, uh, do you have any more? Yeah, yeah, sure. So then we have Andy Ruddock, who's, a champion, but modest about it. And then we have, is it, who's next? Oh. Yeah, well, but so, let, but so I was back. really fascinated with, with, the, with these first five. Um, there was one with Yao Ming, one with Lucy Liu that's not there, but um, how like the three African-American males, each of their r essential selves were something that no one would really want to be. And then the one white male is, is a champion. And how kind of these ways affect the way our, we're socially conditioned and how we relate to our, and ourselves and each other. A silly um, champion with a sense of well, humor. He's, no, he's, An he's embarrassed about champion. It. You know, yeah. yeah, you know, it's tough being a white guy. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then coming, uh, I, I, I guess, uh, out of um, the film you saw, Winter in America. Do you, do you want to just tell us about this? Yeah, we're also piece? just making other work about um, kind of using, really inspired by the language of advertising. I was saying to talk about other things. I. Um, used um, the language of the MasterCard Prices campaign to talk about uh, kind of how we're, even in the mourning process during, uh, after my cousin was murdered, um, we're being marketed to about like which kind of casket to buy, what that says about, where, what, what, what message are we sending out to the world by what products we use to you know, celebrate his life. Okay, hey Claudio, how are we doing on uh, time? Uh, where is Claudio? Claudio has Take abandoned ship. We have about five minutes, 3.27. We're, we're good. Okay, let's, uh, let's so, so this, uh, 
Hank will tell us a, a bit more about this project, but I, I wanted to tie uh, some of his work into this uh, project um, that, that we, over, we have overhead uh, right now as we speak. Um, this was, a, yeah, the, the, essentially on the left, these are um, bus depots or advertising kiosks um, where you, well, it's ironic because I, I guess uh, we'll, we both live in New York, but a lot of these uh, bus depots and kiosks are owned by a company called Van Wagner, and that's the company uh, we're working with to, to, to fly your banner today. But um, do you want to tell us a bit more about what you did oh, here? One of my first, this is for my MFA thesis show, where I realized a lot of the work that I was making that looked like ads actually probably belonged in a context that was more like ads and didn't, shouldn't have my name with a label next to it because it translated differently. So we put it out in the courtyard of the school at CCA and kind of people thought actually that Nike and Absolute were sponsoring the MFA show, which I thought was pretty interesting because rather than it being kind of overt, uh, my work was working in the subconscious because we don't really look at, uh, at, we usually consume ads before we actually look at them and so it's only later that people actually kind of realize there's something complicated or wrong or challenging about this and I'm really interested in trying to figure out how to, to kind of infiltrate those spaces. Sure, and, and, and yeah, the, you know, people who are sitting on the beach today who see these banners fly by, um, you know, ordinarily it might be, uh, you know, come to th this and this club on this and this night, or, uh, you know, will you marry me? Um, and now we have, um, you know, I had this uh, email exchange with, with a, a number of artists, and they've provided me with this, uh, this text. So um, we've sort of uh, taken this traditional advertising vehicle, and we're using... Uh, we're using that vehicle to push through uh, artist messages, so it's kind of the, the the play between those two worlds. Um, let yeah, me just no pictures of any of them. Um, I don't have it. Well, well, like I said, everyone should kind of get outside of the fair because it, you can't spend your whole day in here and uh, take a look at the banners overhead. But um, I want to just we, push. Yeah. Do you want me to push forward to I am a man, and then sure. we could always yeah. make our way back? Yeah. Okay. Always, we can always make our way back. Okay. <laughs> So, I mean, I really wanted to talk about this piece because it's, um, this is a photograph by Ernest Withers that inspires one of the pieces that I have with the Goodman Gallery um, in the fair. But it's really, uh, I was born in 1976, is that true? Um, um, it was just like eight years after um, this um, protest during the Civil Rights Movement in Memphis, Tennessee, where um, this photograph by Ernest Withers, but I, I found it fascinating that people had to stand collectively and affirm their humanity with the signs, I am a man, because the phrase that I grew up in, that we grew up with um, as part of the hip hop generation, so to speak, was I am the man. And I was really fascinated how it went from this kind of collective statement during segregation towards this selfish statement of, uh, you know, you know it's, not a, it's, it's about me being above all. Um, but also, you know, the man is also read as sometimes being bad, so maybe I, I am the, the, the man that you know, everyone talks about. Um, so, and so I did this kind of remix of those, uh, of those, uh, those posters. Um, and I think of, and the, the, the top row was thinking about the Constitution, and it's kind of a timeline, but the Constitution says African, at the time, African Americans were counted as three-fifths of a human being. So I am three-fifths of a man. Am I not a man and a brother? Different, different ones say different things, but I really love the, the, the last line. It's kind of, I, it's organized in my mind as a poem where it says, and I'm actually a little bit thinking of uh, Abbott and Costello, actually, where it says, I'm the man, who's the man? You the man, what a man. I am man, I am human, I am many, I am, am I, I am, I am, I am, amen. And I really, I, I, it's probably the most important thing for me as an affirmation. Someone here has a tattoo that says I am, I saw it today. Um, and because I realized that rather than validating ourselves on anyone else's sense of what's important, maybe the greatest gift that any of us have is our consciousness. And that, it, it, you know, in those moments where we doubt or we feel like we're less because we see an image that, or we meet someone who we think is greater than us, um, that, you know, just that I am, amen, is the thing that kind of is most, uh, is, is the most beautiful thing that we can have, especially thinking about people like Stephen Hawking and all of these amazing people around the world who are limited, what we might think, but actually have gone far beyond us in a lot of different ways. Do you want me to? You want me to go this way? I don't know. Okay. Don't, Let, let's. Uh, how, how are we doing with time? If I, if I, did, are there questions? Um, are, are there questions in the audience? Just so we can make sure we're uh, 
we're, 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 uh, we're good with time. I don't want to uh, run over. I'm sure some of you must have some questions for me or, uh, or well, Hank. Why don't we just show that okay. last neon piece and that's it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you, why don't you so take us through this So just speaking about this, um, this idea of advertising and me appropriating advertising language in my work, this is a neon sign that I uh, had in my sh most recent show at Jack Shaman Gallery. And the top text, it's everywhere you want to be. Can you go back go forward? Sure. It's everywhere you want to be is from, it used to be the visa slogan for most of my childhood. And the, the, the bottom one uh, says the life you were meant to live, which is, was the slogan for, is the slogan for Caesar's Palace. And I was in the subway in New York one day and it was like all grimy and I was walking out and it said, you know, the life you were meant to live. And it's like someone, had a, someone basically doing what I was just doing <laughs> at the beach, you know, it's like sunny and cool and blah, blah, blah. And I realized like how manipulative it, it is to have something like that, the life you were meant to live in the subway, you know? And so I started thinking about also it's everywhere you want to be, you know, like basically you want to be some, somewhere else, like your life is never enough. And so we, can you flip sure. forward or backwards? Yeah, yeah. And so basically I de dissected that, you know, you want life, you, you meant to live. And I'm trying to kind of pull together these subliminal messages in these signs. So but no one has any comments, questions? What don't you like? Do you like? Less, yes, ma'am. She's coming with a microphone. Yeah, we have a mic right there. Hi, I had a question about plain text. Sure. I wanted to know what the, why, why you're doing this and what the process was of choosing the quotes, how long it took to sure. bring it all together. And sure. why also, why Morgan's has a cultural ambassador and um, is sponsoring the event. Sure. Um, well, well, Morgan's, uh, well, plain text, uh, I guess it, it was a six month um, process. I guess it was somewhat of a nostalgic project for me. Um, I, I was always intrigued um, by aerial advertising, as lame as that sounds. Um, uh, growing up at the beach, you know, I always thought uh, the most interesting of all the banners I saw were these sort of um, traditional um, text-based um, banners. Um, obviously, if, if you're a business with a smaller budget, that's sort of your, your bread and butter or your go-to uh, your go-to medium for these ads. It's, you know, if, if you want to ask someone to marry you, it's usually done with the will you marry me because you're on a budget if, if, if you're a local business or bar. So anyhow, I thought it would be interesting um, to ask a, a, a number of um, artists uh, to create um, text um, and, uh, yeah, to put this text in the air. Um, I, I've been coming down to this uh, fair since it began. Um, I know what it's like to, to run around the convention center and see every single piece of art in every single booth here, and sometimes I need to step outside. And I, I live in New York where it's cold in the winter. Um, and I, I, yeah, I, li I like to be outside when I'm down here. Uh, Morgan's Hotel um, was aware of, of some of the work I was doing, and they asked me uh, to, to come on board to help them uh, fold, roll, or, or however you want to look at it. Um, uh, contemporary art into um, into their properties, um, and I'm very interested in public art. Um, to you know, bringing art uh, to a larger audience. That's that's one of the yeah one of the things that that, that it often seems like I'm doing, and and that's sort of how it came to uh, came to fruition. So I hope that answers your question. Does anyone have any questions for Hank? Or him? Or me? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Let, let's. Right in the center here in the third row, yeah. Hi, Hank. Um, they, sh they showed the um, bus kiosks with your images. Are you interested in putting your artwork more in public spaces versus museums and galleries? Yeah, so I mean, I've actually been able to do, I mean, that's why I was really excited about this opportunity to be able to put, and so to, to put my work in the public, and I thought it was really apropos to use that text. What, do you, what Adam's showing um, right now is this, uh, time when I, I was at, in the Contact Photo Festival in Toronto where we put a lot of uh, my work out there where I was actually using, this is a series called Rebranded, where I'm looking at how kind of modern day, coon, you don't see coon images of African Americans anymore, but you'll see East, in, East Indians and Asians kind of caricaturized in the same way, and African Americans don't ever protest, so I call this piece, now that's funny, um, and kind of like trying to like see, think about kind of what things we're kind of recycling back into the world, but it's interesting because 
because it's out in the real world, people don't get it necessarily because they think, oh, this is just an ad. And, and so I, someone critiqued it as like maybe this work is per, perhaps more potent in the galleries and the museum context where people are, are going there to think. So I'm trying to figure out how to balance uh, because if you're driving in your car, you see something that doesn't make sense, you just keep going. <laughs> you know, the, so. I also, I also, didn't I read this morning that you're doing something at the Birmingham Alabama Oh, and I'm doing, a, a, yeah, a collaboration with some friends at the Birmingham airport. Um, and I do a lot of public art, actually, uh, at least a few projects a year with the Cause Collective, but none of them are um, kind of overtly political, you know, but I definitely do that because it just kind of allows me to think differently. And so there's going to be a huge 75-foot uh, media wall that we're doing this crazy thing. So when you fly through Birmingham, starting January, February, you know, so hopefully you'll see it. And I know you have a question over there. Yeah. I, I guess you touched on it a little bit in your answer, but I guess I've seen the kiosks um, and a, a little bit of your work over the years. And um, what's interesting about it is when you approach the work, you have the impression that it's an advertisement and you kind of, um, expect this interaction with an advertisement and once you realize that you're interacting maybe you don't realize but you're you, you're suspicious of the fact that it's not really an advertisement and that it's an artwork and i was wondering if you just talk about um the idea that we're duped or fooled when it's not an advertisement and that we would encounter artwork on the street are we duped you know? or fooled when it's not an advertisement or are we duped or fooled when it is an advertisement yeah we yeah, the I, uh, really, we're duped or fooled when it's when we're being, you know, um, marketed to, to uh, more than we are when we're being offered an artwork. Yeah. But the role gets switched a little bit there. Yeah, well, what I'm, I, I'd, I'd, I'd like to start a revolution um, of, of, of everyday people kind of trying to use this language of advertising to speak back because it's always speaking to us. And I actually don't want to be the only or one of a few t 20 uh, artists kind of use, really using this language. In, in a selfish way to say what we want to say because I really want to be putting my two cents in there. I want your two cents and your two cents because this language is ours. You know, they put it out there for us to, 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 to hear and I, I want us to, to use that. So I don't think of it as a duping. I think it's about kind of speaking my language, you know, and speaking your language. Do we have some other, uh, right? Yeah, let, why don't we go right here in the front and then in the fourth row. You don't have to excuse me, I'm a little tired as most of us are, but I you do last had night? A, a, a lot and then a little bit of not enough. Um, I've had the pleasure of seeing your work over the years and I've, I'm equally moved by the short film that you did. I saw it a few years ago and like you, seeing it again, it, it moves you. Um, do you find yourself in the future or do you foresee possibly moving into the film medium a little more like a few other uh, artists have. Uh, they've sort of stepped away from what they're usually doing and have like focused on short uh, feature films or maybe something that is um, connected to your vision as an artist. Do you find yourself uh, moving towards that type of medium? Fully? Yeah. Well, in the past um, year or so, I've definitely become few years I've done I've done I've been to Sundance Film Festival with two projects with Cause Collective uh, the last one Question Bridge Black Males which actually premiered at the Brooklyn Museum same time that it premiered at Sundance um, and it's really kind of a five channel installation and, and the film world is actually embracing the art world as people's attention spans get shorter for feature length films people are really and there, there's a medium called transmedia where people are trying to figure out how do we tell stories in a new way and they're looking at the art world a lot so I think maybe we're getting kind of brought into it and, it, and it's exciting. I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to make a feature film. I c executive produced one called An Oversimplification of Her Beauty by Terrence Nance over there um, and it'll be a, a theater near you in May, in March um, and that was also at Sundance and, and other festivals so I, the kind of, I like kind of sitting back while someone else does the, the thinking and I just like Yell, whisper or yell in their ear like, you should do this, you should do this, and then they elbow me, be quiet for now. So I think we have, right here in the um, third row on the left, this gentleman here, I think we have time for one last question. I'm just uh, curious, because a lot of your works are just the words. Um, 
I know you practice reasonably well, but I haven't. You've talked about the loop. You just uh, sorry, but I'm Australian, so my accent's a little weird. Um, you talk about the loop of words and advertising and so on, uh, and I don't remember the reference very well. But there's an artist that talks about you know the idea is the artwork, and therefore describing it is. Uh, does your work ever go into that bounds where you just even just describe, you know, the, the people that you're thinking of or, or any of that kind of, that realm where it only exists in words? Like describing the visual? I'm like, as, I don't speak have, have I lost you? <laughs> Say it one more time. Okay. So, yeah. with your written works, have you just stripped it right back to describing what you were going to make visually? That's so deep. <laughs> um, and, uh, I was like, I had this moment where I was scared. I was like, afterwards. Yeah, okay. I don't maybe. want to I was like, in front of all these people trying to answer that question. <laughs> okay, sure. But I, yeah, so sorry if I, does anybody else understand that better than me to answer it? Seriously. Mom? She's got a PhD. What, what? So, uh, oh, here we Let's what, get sorry. the mic so, on. Am I a man? Will that, how do you? present that visually in visual images? Will you marry that story, this poem? Will you marry it with the visual in terms of visualizing some of this image? You guys are, why are you embarrassing me? The two of you, I'm like, what did I, I was you with you planted, last night apparently. You're a plant. <laughs> he was planted uh, in the audience. I mean, I think for me, um, I, what I find text, you know, here they're talking about text being kind of a really big theme in the, the fair and the festival. I mean, what I'm really interested in is I'm still writing and speaking primarily in English. I did one project was in Hebrew and Arabic. Um, but how these signs, how do we figure out to translate without the text is what I'm really interested in. But the text, what I love about the way I've been using text is that you have to say I, me, we, you, us to relate to the art. So as soon as you read something that says I, you embody it. Um, and, and I'm really trying to get into my own and other people's self subconscious. And I think the way that people are photographing themselves with I am the man over there is really kind of speaks to the way that like you see it and you just embraced it. But um, thank the two of you for yeah, uh, that yeah. question. Thank you, for every, thank you to everybody for coming out. And thanks to Hank for uh, participating in this. Yeah.